Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Jenny. Tanya. Okay. I see a lot of black screens. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> I don't blame you. Guys. Okay, so. No, I don't <laughs> if okay. I could be if I could be in pajamas and a snood right now, I would also be. I don't blame you. You can um have your cameras off. You could do whatever you want. You could clean while you listen. It's all good. Okay. Guess what? You don't even have to write notes because everything we're saying is in the Pesach packet. So we're just no, gonna go it's through good it to a hear it. Just to talk yes. it out. Yes, but you don't even have to write notes. You could keep cleaning or give yourself a break and sit down and uh enjoy for a few minutes. Okay. So we're going to get started. Um, no, I don't know. We to now. I'm just going to mute everybody. One second. Okay. Mute all. Okay. Um, okay. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, okay. So a little bit of an introduction. Um, first of all, just um, really, I give everyone a lot of credit for being here. I know it's like the busiest time of the year. And the fact that you're here, even with your cameras off, doesn't matter means that you really care and you want to hear what there is to hear and you want to do your best over Pesach. So shout out for being here, really. Um, why do we do this every year? Um, we don't do this for any other holiday usually. Why do we do this every single year? Why do we have a Zoom and a whole big packet and a whole thing, right? Because Pesach, as you know, is um, for most people the hardest Yom Tif to stay on track. And I think a few years ago was the first time I finally figured out why. I know it's I know why for the basic reasons, but even more so is because it's the only Yom Tev that takes over your life before, during, and after. So other Yom Tovim requires some prep, but not like Pesach. So they don't take over your life before. For many of you, your house is already like sort of in between Pesach and not Pesach. So your usual things are missing. Your routine is thrown off. You have, you know, um, uh, boys coming home, Ben Azmanim. You have... Um, you have uh, married couples coming in from Israel. You have your high school girls have been off of school, supposed to help. Whether they're helping or not is a whole other story. They're more like shopping or whatever, right? Maybe they are helping. Maybe you don't want their help. Maybe you want the kitchen to yourself, whatever. So your life has been officially taken over before. During is for obvious reasons. And then after is also till everybody goes back to where they need to go, till we um, turn the kitchen back over, till we restock our refrigerators and our cabinets and go back to normal routine. So it's pretty safe to say that this Yom Tif takes over our lives for about a month, as opposed to the eight, nine days, whatever it is that Yom Tif actually is. It probably takes over our life for about a month, at least for most people. So this is why we're here to prepare you and help you do as best as you can. So let's start with uh, before the holiday, like suggestions and perspective. So I'll introduce it and then I'll let Jenny say it. So um, there's a concept of good enough is good enough. So what that means is like this. So a while ago, I heard a parenting class that was talking about like that time of that time period where the kids have no school and things are crazy, like let's say between camp and school or between school and camp when we're busy we're packing up for the bungalow or we're packing up to go home and the kids have no school and everything is crazy and it's not the right time to perfectly iron every single shirt it's not the right time to have five course meals hot meals every single night it's not the right time to read uh five books at bedtime because you just want to educate your child even more than usual right it's not the time like that's a time period where and this is not me saying it, this was the parenting person saying it, that this is a time where if your kids are safe and not starving and you're okay and you're not yelling 100 times a day, but only 30 times a day, okay, I'm being dramatic, but you know what I mean? Then that's good. Good enough is good enough. So I, of course, because I'm one track minded, applied this to dieting where sometimes it's good enough to be good enough. Meaning what happens a lot during this time period is people feel like it's hectic or Pesach is too hard. Let me just throw everything out the window. It's not true. It's just that this is not your time to be perfect, but it's also not your time to be completely off track and do whatever. Meaning just because you're not serving that five course meal and reading five books of bedtime doesn't mean your kids are starving and sleeping on the stairs in their dirty clothing, right? There's like a very nice in between and we have to remember that so 
some examples, Jenny, you want to go through some examples, like in terms of our plan and when good enough is good enough? Yeah. So for this, for this coming week, right, we talk about keeping it on, like, maybe you're just kind of doing the same thing. Like if you know the type of food that works, if you prepare in advance, keeping it on repeat, just kind of doing the same thing over and over. It's not like every meal needs to be super exciting. You don't need to have the conversation with yourself like, oh, I'm getting bored. Like sustenance is good enough. And that's okay for this week because there's going to be plenty of good food coming next week. Um, I just want to give an example. Someone told me today that there's no way she could sit down and have a salad. So I looked at her. I said, who said you have to have a salad? She's like, I don't. I said, no, you don't. How about a cucumber, a string cheese and some Elba toast if you're still bringing in chametz? Or if you're not bringing in chametz, I know you won't eat matzah crackers on Pesach, but maybe you'll eat matzah crackers now. So matzah crackers, string cheese and a cucumber. Just get in a protein, a starch, a vegetable. That's it. Right. Okay. It's sustenance and it works. It really does. Yes. If you are ordering out, it's fine. You just have to, you know, definitely try to make the better choice from the menu, you know? So it doesn't only mean a grilled chicken salad, but at the same time, there's somewhere in between the grilled chicken salad and the schnitzel sandwich with rice. Um, so it's kind of about listening to your body, what you need, but again, making the better choice, even if it's not something you would normally do, even if you're going to be t eating takeout more than you normally would be, it's good enough as long as it's not the schnitzel sandwich with, you know, with all the, with all the stuff on it. Good enough is good enough. Exactly. Exactly. Um, another example is, um, let's say you're normally the type that weighs your proteins on a food scale, right? Okay. So right now your food scale is away. Does that mean you should just eat whatever? No. So don't weigh your proteins. I boil your proteins, right? Or normally you have an exact count of how many waters, water cups or bottles you drink. And right now, you know, approximately. So should you not drink water? No, definitely not. Um, also perspective wise, if you knew that a big expense is coming, right? And it's actually very apropos because Pesach is a big expense financially and calorically. So you know that a big expense is coming. So you don't say to yourself, okay, my Pesach expenses are coming. So I may as well get Chanel shoes and a Prada bag, right? Because a big expense is coming. You don't say that. You, the opposite. You say to yourself, a big expense is coming. Let me budget ahead of time. So even up. Right. So yeah, save up ahead of the, the big expense, which is coming up. Similarly, um, I also one year had a client say to me, it's a whole Pesach is a whole different ball game. And I really thought about it afterward. And I was thinking like, you know, we use that expression all the time and we don't always like think about exactly what it means. But if you really think about it, you can't use the rules of baseball to play basketball. And you have to be realistic about the fact that what is going on right now is completely different than what goes on during the year. So of course, you all get that. We're not saying just do what you need to do, but it's good enough to be good enough because that's where we're holding right now, realistically. Just don't throw it all out the window, basically. Um, okay, another thing you could be doing with this time, since we still have some time before Pesach, is to find out in advance um, how much really is a minimum of matzah and how much really is a minimum of grape juice or wine. Because a lot of times the reason that people have too much is because they um, they they get nervous that they're not having enough. So the Seder is not the time to start asking, is this a kazais? Is that a kazais? Don't do that. Find out in advance. And then some people, they're very organized about it. They'll literally put it into baggies with, they'll measure it out and they'll put it into baggies. And with grape juice or wine, it's Rove Coast, which means most of the cups. So instead of Rove Coast of a big cup, they'll get little cups. And then it's so much less of the Rove Coast. Now it sounds insignificant, but it's not because we have two Sadarim, right? Um, we yeah, have, night. right. We have a certain amount of cups per Seder. We also have other meals. So everything adds up again, if this was money and we were doing like little, little changes, this would all add up. Um, so find out the minimums in advance. Okay. Um, by the way, we'll have questions at the end. So if anyone has questions, definitely save them for the end. Um, we're going to go through the general guidelines, like of the Siddharam first. So Jenny, you want to go through it? Like how much matzah, what type? Um, no, I'm going to let you do it. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll do it. Okay. So, um, uh, people get very shocked when we tell them this. So some of you already know this, but a round matzah is equal to four breads and a square matzah is equal to two breads. So how much matzah at a Seder is whatever your minimum is and don't exceed that. And how much matzah for homo and meals and whatever is basically equivalent to your breads that you normally have. So what type of matzah? We recommend whole wheat because people tend to get constipated on Pesach 
And um, as is, they get constipated either way. So at least the whole wheat has a lot of fiber and it will help with the constipation. Um, um, uh, contrary to popular belief, spelt and all these things, they're, they're, they may be good for digestion, for digestion, like if someone has stomach issues, but they're not dietetic. So you don't get to have more just because it's something else. So definitely stick to whole wheat. Um, how much grape juice or wine? Uh, what I said before, row of coast, so really, really minimum. It does help to do light grape juice because a little saving plus a little saving adds up to a lot. So it's worth doing that. Um, another suggestion is before the Seder, uh, before candle lighting, both to Dharm, have a light dinner. Okay. It, it makes a big difference because otherwise, if you're not, that means that you're eating dinner at one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning, and you're going to be starved and eating a heavy meal. So eat a light dinner. That could look like a piece of chicken and some vegetables or a bowl of chicken soup and some vegetables, just something to hold you over. Okay. Um, and then of course with the simanim and all these things, the symbolic things is just a little bit. You don't have to have a whole huge sandwich with um chavrosis and mar. If you're gonna be hungry, you're gonna want to have that huge sandwich, but you don't need to have that. Um, Jenny, you want to do general guidelines, yamtiv meals? Yamtiv meals? Then you just do yeah, like um Oh, did I skip? No, first yamtiv meals, then chalmoid. Like regular yamtiv meals versus the seder. Um, okay, yeah. So typically, similarly, just like Shabbos meals, you know, like Tanya said, if if you're using the round shmur matzahs, same idea as as minimal as possible. You know, half is equal to two bread. So even if you could keep it to like a quarter or a third, it's better. By the meals, um, you know, protein and vegetables, the same way that you usually do it. If you can measure out your protein before, it's better, but really try to fill your plate with vegetable salads. Like that is the best. And truthfully, if you think about it, I know we compensate like all these kugels and different things on Pesach, but realistically, protein and vegetables is like the essence of what you're eating, what's available. There really should be, you know, options and what to work with. Okay. Um, I want to say a helpful tip is to get up from the meal, even if you don't have to. The meals tend to be very, very long. And when you're sitting there, you might feel strong in the beginning, in the first 10 minutes, one hour, hour and a half. And then it just becomes like, keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. So even if you don't have to, even if you're somewhere where someone else is serving and you don't have to do a thing, your kids are well behaved, you don't have to get up and run after them. There's no reason for you to get up. Find a reason to get up. Pretend you need to go to the bathroom, be extra helpful, go play with your kids, go talk to someone who's sitting somewhere else. When you get up, even just for a few minutes, it just changes your perspective. Gives you a little bit of a head break. Yeah. And then you just do so much better. Um, okay. So um, also, I want to clarify the difference between what we can and what we cannot control during yamtiv meals. So again, it's similar to what I said earlier. Just because it's not perfect doesn't mean it goes out the window. So to differentiate a few examples, we cannot control the fact that the meals are late at night. There's nothing we could do, right? We can't control the fact that we have to wash and eat a kazayas and bench and all that. Nothing we could do, right? We can control the fact that we have to have symbolic foods, right? But we can control what we're choosing to eat. Meaning like Jenny said, you don't have to have the kugel, right? You don't have to have the dessert. You could always drink a lot of water. You could get up from the table, right? So just differentiate between what you can and what you cannot control. And okay. I find that something interesting to think about is that every time, whether it's specifically on Pesach or in general, that you make a good choice, you strengthen that muscle inside of you of making a good choice. Yes. So one good choice, it's a domino effect, leads to another good choice. Again, not saying we're going to be perfect, but if you know you drank your water, if you know you got up, you walked around, like there really is that part of you that's stronger and more able to make better decisions. Yes. Um, I'll give you an example. I have a client who's in her late 60s and she told me that her whole life she eats potato kugel every single Friday. Okay. And I told her, I, I give you a challenge. I dare you almost like one Friday, don't eat kugel, meaning she would always eat it Arab Shabbos when it came out hot out of the oven. And she said, impossible. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. I'm in my <laughs> no way, no way, no way. I said, I dare you. Okay. One time, right? She came back the next week. Her weigh-in is always on a Tuesday. She came in on a Tuesday. She said, I did it. It was very hard, but I did it. I said, okay, now I dare you to do it another time. One more time. That's it. She came back the next Tuesday. I did it again. Can you believe it? I did it twice. I said, one more. And it's a chazaka. That's it. Just one more. Yeah. So she came back the third Tuesday. She's like, okay, I did it. Now I could go back to eating it. I said, do you want to go back to eating it? She's like, 
I don't know. I feel like I could kind of keep doing this. And now it's been like months to the point where I, when I remind her that she used to eat kugel every Friday, she's like, nah, you're mixing me up with someone else. I don't <laughs> eat kugel on Friday, right? Funny. But that's what happens. The more times we do something, like Jenny said, it strengthens the muscle and it's easier to do it. So, um, okay, Um, First of all, oh, I see Goldie's here. Hi, Goldie. Are you going to uh, pitch into our tips? I'm putting her on the spot. But Goldie, we see you. So if you want to. You're here. We don't see you. Don't worry. Your camera's off. Oh, actually, now your camera's on. If you want to pitch in with tips, you're welcome to. Goldie is one of our awesome counselors. Her camera's on, it says. No, it's dark. I don't know. Okay, Goldie, no pressure. It's up to you. Um. Okay. Um. Cholmoid. So the biggest thing we hear is, how can I write food logs? I don't write on Cholmoid. Okay, guys, you text on Cholmoid? Yes. Okay. So just text your food log. Text it to yourself, text it to us, put it on notes on your phone, whatever, but if, don't use it as an excuse, okay? Um, when you're going on a trip, you would never go on a trip with your kids without bringing food for them. You would never go without bringing a diaper bag. You're not less important than your kids. You know, have you ever noticed that when you're hungry, you're hangry, you know, like hungry, angry, you're not in a good mood, you're grouchy. So for the sake of everyone and yourself, pack along a bag. Um, a reminder, is that Goldie? I don't know. Okay. A reminder is you don't have to have matzah and cholamoid. You can have um, beets or butternut squash or a potato or nothing. It's okay if you skip a starch at I'm gonna mute everybody. Um you could skip a starch at one meal and nothing will happen. So some ideas for cholamoid you could bring along um tuna or fish or cheese or eggs. There's tons of ideas in the Pesach packet. Okay. Um Okay, another tip is, oh, okay, fine, Goldie, no problem. When you're ready, go for it. Okay, um, another tip is um, getting dressed. Have you ever noticed that when you're dressed, you are a different person, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm very tired on Friday nights. I promise you the last thing I want to do is get dressed on Friday nights. I just want to be in like schlumpy, whatever. But a lot of times I force myself because it just makes you act more like a queen, act more menschlich with your food. So sometimes we're forced to get dressed if we're having a guest, if we're having guests or if we're the guest. But let's say you don't have to get dressed. I'm not saying you should go get dressed up like crazy, but just getting dressed, right? Just feeling like a mensch, just feeling a little more put together will make such a difference. Um, also a suggestion to do ahead of time because now it's still, you have a, a little bit of time, is get interesting things to read if you like to read. Um, it's a long, long emptive. You're going to get through the Ami pretty quickly. You're going to need a little more than that. So um, get some things to read, whatever it is that you enjoy. Okay. Um, okay. You skipped um, something that I really like here, which says pick your favorite tips. Like if you look through that pace off packet, it's, I know it's forever long and there's so much going on. Pick two things that resonate to you and like read them over and over and maybe even like write them on sticky notes and hang them on your fridge and like use it as constant motivation. It's not right. like you need to be, it's not like you need to take from every single, single thing we're saying, every single thing we give you, figure out the one or two things minimum that resonate with you and like and are practical things that you could actually do things that yeah. that are yeah that are not yeah. crazy um we also included in the packet a lot of different finds i added more this year so i know that many of you are limited with what you eat but we even included things for very limited um you know people who eat very limited things including recipes and you can cook on yum tip so even if you don't have time before yum tip you can cook on yum tip as well um okay um, I want to talk about schmaltz for a second. Schmaltz um, is um, chicken fat, right? As far as I understand it, I hope I'm explaining it correctly. I've never had it or seen it, but schmaltz, I think is chicken fat. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But um, the best tip I heard from my client one year is she said that people just like pour schmaltz over their food because they won't use oil or they won't use spray. So she gets a spray bottle ahead of time and she puts the schmaltz in the spray bottle, like a hairspray kind of bottle. And then she sprays the schmaltz instead of pouring the schmaltz, which saves a lot of fat and calories. So do that. Um, cooking on Yamtiv, I just said that. Okay. Um, also, another tip is to have your own um, self made gedarim, right? Like boundaries. So, um, for example, 
Um, I will not be perfect, but I'm not having cake until the last day. Or I will not be perfect, but I'm not touching kugel until my sister-in-law's kugel, which I love from every year. Just give yourself some sort of gedarim because otherwise it's like a free-for-all and the sky's the limit, okay? That was even generous. I, I told people all week, I'm like, pick one thing that you are not touching the whole yantiv. Like, that's it. Pick your okay. thing. Again, okay. exercise yeah. the muscle. Yeah, Show you could. You, do it. you could. But if that's very hard for you to do, then you can <laughs> do the bully method, right? Because it's very hard to say, like, I'm not having cake at all. I'm not having cocoa at all. But well, it doesn't have to be method. something so dramatic. I don't know. Okay, like what? French fries. <laughs> french fries i don't know you know okay french fries is a good one right or air fry them um okay. pick pick your direction right um okay so then speaking of the good enough right there are exceptions wait someone's raising their hand that's so cute i don't even know you could do that but okay let's see hold on actually you want to just save your question for the end let's just get through it i just got thrown off by that because that's so cute it's a cute raise hand emoji okay but just save your question for the end. Okay. Exceptions that one can make. Um, so because we said good enough is good enough and you don't have to be like perfect. So for example, meat is going to end up being more than twice a week. That's okay. Um, you have your Shabbos budget for those who know how the plan works. You could have your fruits, your snacks, your treat in any order, just like on Shabbos. It doesn't have to be in a specific order. You can't weigh your food or don't want to weigh your food. Don't. Um, your cooking methods are going to be different, especially because you're using schmaltz, even in a spray bottle versus um, spray or oil. Um, okay, you want to use your treat every night, use your treat every night. Um, let's say you're on a stricter plan. Let's say you started on a regular plan and then your plan was made stricter. So now is not the time to be stricter. Now is the time to maintain so you could just do your regular um, usual plan. Okay. Um, I want to say that um, I want to say that perspective wise, the goal over Yamtiv is not to lose weight. The goal is just to stay the same. So if you haven't heard, we have a contest. OK, this contest is amazing. We started it, I think, last year or two years ago, where as long as you stay within one pound of your pre Pesach weight, you could either use your weigh in weight from your previous weigh in or you could text us your weight on your home scale Arab Yemtiv. As long as you stay within that one pound, you get entered into a raffle and you could win either one free year of nutrition or one free year of MSculpt. MSculpt is a FDA approved machine that we have at every location to lose inches. So last year, 95% of people stayed within one pound of their pre pace of weight, which means that it can be done and it has been done. So if you haven't already, it's only $20. You just have to text the office 718-594-7995, 718-594-7995. Text the office and say, join pace of contest. Okay. Um, if anyone on here is Syrian, then you can use your peas and your rice and um, rice cakes and things like that as usual allowance. Just keep in mind that that takes away from your matzah. Okay. Um, I want to just talk about a few other resources and then we will, um, hold on one second. Hold on. Actually, before I get to the resources, I skipped the page one second. Um, for those of you who ask, like, I only eat very, very limited things. What can I eat? Right. So first of all, like Jenny said, it's okay to repeat, right? It doesn't have to be exciting. Okay. Food is food. And I get it. Sometimes we want food to be like exciting, rah, 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 like geo. I call it like geo. Like you want to go to school and have geo every single day, but that can't always happen. It's okay for it to be boring. It's okay to repeat the same things over and over. This is a perfect example of something you cannot control, right? You can't control the fact that you have certain traditions and you eat limited food. So just do what you can, okay? But um, another out of the box, a little bit idea is to use protein as a snack. So you can't have your tap muffin and your tap cookie. Okay. So have an egg or have half the amount of chicken or half the amount of fish, like whatever protein you normally get, have half the amount. Okay. Um, now it's a little bit tricky the way, uh, Pesach comes out this year because it's a lot of yum tub and very, very little homoid. So I want you to picture like, like literally like a map, I really should have drawn it out like a map, 
of all the days and all the meals, right? And it's a lot of meals and it's a lot of days, right? But if we break it down, right, there are so many opportunities to be completely on track. Like, for example, breakfasts and snacks and water, right? And even the in-betweens, it's it's the yumt of meals that are very, very hard. But it doesn't mean that for two weeks straight or 10 days straight, we are completely off, okay? Um, and you'll feel better sitting down to your meal if you haven't been off track the whole morning, the whole day before. Like, it just feels good to take advantage of those moments where you can just be on track and it's not necessarily a challenge or as challenging. Right. Um, if anyone is going to a hotel, um, just a couple of quick tips and then there's much more in the packet. Um, I do recommend bringing either a scale or a fitted skirt or both. I'll tell you why, because I'm not saying you should go on the scale every single day, but to go through such a long period of time without knowing where we're at is just very, very long. You know, that kind of skirt that like when you put it on, you know, you just know, you know, those kinds of skirts, um, also, um, exercise the one plate rule, whether you're going to a hotel or you're a guest, let's say it's a buffet, or let's say there's really nothing healthy. So you do the one plate rule, which means you take a plate, fill it up with the best of the worst, and that's it. And no refills. Okay. Um, if you do have an option, like, let's say you're ordering, let's say you're sitting in the hotel and the waiter is asking you what you want. So I've been to programs. I know that it can be done. If you're very, very specific, they will listen to you most of the time, especially nicer programs. Just don't be shy. You could say, please make it not as oily. Please don't fry it. Okay. Avoid the tea room. Do not go near the tea room. Okay. It's not, I, I don't trust myself in the tea room. Like people think that like, oh, you for sure could walk into a tea room and you'll be so strong. No, I'm not crazy. I don't go into tea rooms. Okay. If I want something from there, like a coffee or a tea, I'll ask one of my kids to bring it to me and I'm, I stay far away from the tea room. So if you want to delay it and tell yourself you'll go at the end, you'll go on the last day, but don't start with that. Okay. Um, I think one of the first times I ever saw you, you were standing outside of a tea room. <laughs> <laughs> Story Jenny for another time. I, yeah. Jenny, yes. Fun fact, Jenny and I met at a Pesach program. Yeah. I, I followed you to a Pesach program. <laughs> oh, I thought you followed me into the tea room to see if I um, <laughs> in the tea room. I was following I, you. I don't, you know, like for example, Kakish cake is my weakness, right? Like for those of you who know me, you know, Kakish cake is like my thing, right? Would I bring Kakish cake into my house, put it on my counter and stare at it? No, I'm not crazy. So if you can avoid the tea room, avoid the tea room. Room. Um, another thing with whether you're staying home or whether you're going away, a little fun tip is, you know how like you have that kind of clothing, like you have the clothing that you wear when you feel like a little better and like a couple of pounds down. And then you have the outfits that you wear when you're like a couple of pounds up, you know, so do the opposite of what people do. People wear their fitted stuff in the beginning and their loose stuff at the end, right? Why don't you flip it? Wear the loose stuff in the beginning and save the fitted stuff for the end. Like this, you'll want to fit into it and look good in it, right? Save it for the end. Um. Okay, now in terms of um, things that can happen, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, no matter how many I'm told him, you could always take a walk, okay? Not that it burns so much calories, okay? And, and if you've seen my videos, exercise does not make you lose weight, but it clears your head. It puts you in the right perspective. It releases endorphins. You get into a good mood. You get out of the house. You do something other than sitting around and eating. Okay. So walking, being active, water is something you could do. Logging your food. Like I said, if you don't text, I'm sorry, if you don't write, text it, put it on notes, whatever it is. Um, and always, always, no matter what day or time you go off, a minute later, you act like nothing happened. And you go back on track. So I don't care if it's like smack a middle of Pesach, a random Tuesday, 2 p.m. You never tell yourself, oh, forget it. I'm just going to go back on track after Pesach. No, by 2.01 p.m., right? Not the next day, that minute to a minute later, it's like nothing happened and you are completely, completely back on track. I once had a client tell me something and I thought it was interesting and I share it sometimes that she would say anytime she would go off track, she might even be, even be on the Zoom. Um, she was saying that anytime she would go off track, she would do something to differentiate that from that next minute. So meaning like, even if you do this just for Pesach, pick one thing, pick your like, I don't know, even, it could be it could be like a walking around for a minute. It could be 10 jumping jacks. It could be like listening to a specific 
song on your phone. I don't know. Pick one thing and make that your separation so that that I probably not something on your phone because you might want to use it on Yontif also. But again, something that's like a mental change from what happened to what's happening next. That's very interesting. That's cute. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if she's um, on. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So that is some of the guidelines. I want to just tell you some of the resources that you have available to you. First of all, um, well, some, some, some important things. You need a new water bottle and we have them on sale and you need a new food scale and we have them on sale. Um, we still have some muffins and cookies for Pesach left. So make sure to stock up. They're almost sold out. Um, even if you don't eat them on Pesach, the couple of days before when your house is turned over, you're going to need them to stay on track. So and they're really good. Them. Yes, <laughs> they are. So um, and the cookbook, the gluten-free cookbook is also on sale because um, it has a lot of Pesach recipes. Um, we also um, in the packet included a going out to eat guide with every neighborhood and different restaurants. So if you're ordering out, you have that guide of what to order from each place. Um, we also gave you some chametz recipes in the packet to get rid of your chametz. You have this Zoom, which um, so far it's getting recorded and you never know because when <laughs> been there, done that. We've had that issue, but right now it's being recorded. So we will send it out. Um, okay. And then we have the contest, which I mentioned that you should definitely enter. And then we have the huge packet for you to read. If you are going to a location, we still have some printed copies left. You could pick it up. But either way, it's in your email. And before you say it's not, please check your um, spam folder. Um, an important note about after Pesach is, is that it's really, really... Oh, one more thing. Sorry. The frozen muffin sale. If you want to stock up or if you need some frozen muffins, we have a sale as well on that. Um, and one more thing. Um, giving fitness classes over Zoom every single day. Arab Yamtev, Chal Moed, every single day. So if you want information on that, just text me 917-913-1523. Um, it could be done from the comfort of your home. You could have your camera off, but I will be giving live fitness Zoom classes every single day. Um, okay, so I want to say also another thing. The minute Pesach ends, if possible, try to turn your kitchen over as soon as you can because what happens is, is people get stuck in that stage of like, it's still Pesach, especially like it ends... Um, it ends on a Tuesday night. And by the time people go back to semi-normal, it's Thursday and then it's right away Shabbos. So we don't need to extend it even more. Your goal is to get back to normal with restocking, turning over everything back to normal as soon as possible. Um, okay, so that's some of our tips. Goldie, you want to add anything? Jenny? I think we're good. Okay. Um, okay, so now we would love to answer any questions. Um, I'll go, go to the person that raised her hand first. Hold on. Let me just, just unmute yourself, please. It's, I don't know who this is, but it's a 212 number. Um... She's still muted. I don't know. Do you want to unmute yourself, whoever this is? Uh, okay. Okay. If you change your mind, let us know. Um, okay. Anyone else have any questions? Oh, she probably pressed something by mistake. Okay. I didn't know you could press raise hand. That's really cute. Okay. Um, let's hear some questions. Questions, comments. Anybody have any other tips that we didn't mention? No? Look at that. We got it all. So we're set. Right, oh, guys? Sharon. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Hi. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask about the matzah um like how much um for one like board of matzah is that one bread um the square the round like i just want to write down the round I do this every year the round um a whole round is four round is four square is two okay <laughs> okay all the down. way from yeah. las vegas 
Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's more fun. Yeah, that is fun. Do you have a selection of matzo there? I sound like such a uh, snappy New Yorker. Is there more than like um, there? Or like there's one type of matzo? Um, you know, the I mean at the store at the store you could get the um I mean for Pesach, they have the the basic. You know, you know the the white stuff, uh, the the nonshmura, what is it, Manischewitz or whatever. Oh, okay. They have they have that. Um, but over here, like you have to really order um what you need. Limited, right. Okay. Like you real I mean, um I think well, I live I live where I live, uh the Costco did not have the the hand shmura, the round, the holy land or something that's like absolute cardboard. Um, but people buy that, that's what's available. But um we get we get an order from Queens. Oh, um, okay. People who or people who order in advance, so we get puppet Salem. Oh, okay, cool. So you have some choices. Okay, someone wrote. Um, yeah. Remember that losing weight is hard, and being overweight is hard. So choose your hard. Yeah, that's like literally one of my favorite quotes ever. Like mm -hmm. whenever people tell me like, "Oh, it's so hard," I'm like, "Yeah, but so is staying overweight, right? Mm -hmm. They're both hard." So. We have to just choose which heart we want. And if it was easy, then everybody would do it, right? Um, amazing tips. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Razy. Um, and then someone said, I have a question about this week pre-Pesach. Okay, Sarah. Yeah, so go ahead, ask. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. Okay, so now is the week before Pesach. So by me, the, you can't just cook because I'm emptying out everything in my kitchen. I don't have a Pesach kitchen. I have boxes of Pesach stuff and I'm not turned over. I can't cook right now. I want to live on protein bars and shakes. I can't, otherwise I can't manage food this whole week. Can I do that? Where do you live? Manhattan. I don't live near all the kosher stores. Okay. I, don't, I, I want to get the tap food. If I get to a kosher store, I'll order it. I'll buy it, but right if, this minute, if you're able to make a trip to Bar Park, right, I would say stock up on like our frozen Flashix meals, which are on sale this week. And then you have literally food for the whole week. You could get the dairy for lunch, the Flashix for dinner, but living on bars and shakes. I mean, I just don't think you'll be full. Um, it's not like the best option, but if you have no choice and you want to semi stay within a range, it's okay. But if you can make a trip to Bar Park or even send an Uber, or a taxi or whatever will will fill it up for you and you'll have even better than that okay yeah. that could be a good idea yeah good luck okay i find this week is if, harder if, than yet for me Once yes. if, if if i could say something um if i have like a bag of baby carrots and i have a box of of the plum tomatoes like that's that's very helpful cuz yeah. it's prepared already try to get right. like stuff like that Right. It's also a good way to like add in other foods, you know, so meaning even if you're eating the bars, which technically do have protein and nutritional value, at least by adding the vegetables that are just, you know, there. I'll order in. I could order in salads, right? It's also good, like nerves wise, because when you're stressed out and you're busy and you're overwhelmed, like the baby carrots and the cherry tomatoes are good, like nervous food, you know, like yeah. kind of, or like that when you're okay, like, that's good. Yeah. That's yeah, very I had a client say that cherry tomatoes are like gushers. I'm like, oh, if you say so. <laughs> I, that, if you was, that was something. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions? Don't be shy. Speak up. Anybody have any tips that they've found helpful for themselves that you want to share? Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Hi, Tanya. It's good to see Hi, you. Hi, You too. Um. I find I find it hard with snacks. Like uh, everything is made of potato starch and sugar. Okay. So what? Like what are the options for snacks except for string cheese? So almonds, um, almonds. Even lady fingers are not bad, not terrible. They're in our packet. Um, we also gave some recipes. Even if you're the type of person who uses very limited ingredients. You could also, I don't know if you heard earlier, but you could use a protein, like half a protein as a snack, like half the amount of chicken, half the amount of fish, um, half the amount of eggs um, combined with whatever vegetable you would eat. So that could also be a snack. What about a yogurt? 
yeah. yogurt is fine. Perfect. Oh, cool. Just look out for the sugar. Some yogurts are so high in sugar. Some yogurts have like 20 something grams of sugar. Just stay under nine to avoid um, being too hungry and craving sugar. Okay. Thanks so much. Sure. Good luck. Okay. Let's hear some more questions. Are there still a lot of tap um, kosher for Pesach products available in stores? So the stores only have the muffins, not the cookies. This year, the cookies are allocations only. I don't have a way of knowing. They don't really tell us. Um, but where do you live? Mm -hmm. Passaic. Oh, you live in Passaic. So you're closest to Muncie. So mm -hmm. if you're able to get to Muncie, then you could get the cookies and the muffins. Then that would be, um, then you're getting the most. Got it. Is there still time to order cookies online or no? If you order online Monday, yeah. If as long, order it tonight and then you'll get it by like Wednesday. Okay, got They'll it. They'll do it first thing in the morning if you order it tonight. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, sure. Anybody else? Anyone have any tips that they found were helpful for them that they want to share that we didn't cover? No? Any questions? There's no such thing as a bad question or a dumb question, by the way, because people can always learn from any question. So don't be shy. Going once, going twice. No? Does anybody want to see my purple wall? <laughs> I love your purple wall, Jenny. It's I have so a purple aesthetic. wall in my house. It's so aesthetic. I, I know. I wish my whole house was that color. I'm really jealous. Look at my plain, boring <laughs> wall. I'm like actually jealous. I'm inspired. It was, it was really, it was, it was. It was a good decision. It was a good decision. It was a necessary addition here. <laughs> um, so, you know, Jenny actually reminded me of something. Thank you, Jenny. Um, everyone, I recommend when I do emotional eating workshops with people, um, I always talk about a timeout couch or a timeout area, right? Somewhere where we could go to have headspace. Because a lot of times the reason we eat when we know we shouldn't be eating is just because we need a little headspace. We, so we're tuning out the noise. Pesach is probably more head noise and emotional noise than any other Yom Tif. Even in the best case scenario, you might get along with everyone in your family. You might love everyone in your family. Um, you might be super happy spending time with all these people, right? But even in the best case scenario, it gets overwhelming, okay? So in that case, it's good to have a little timeout area where you go for a little headspace. This way, you avoid the emotional eating that inevitably comes with wanting to tune everyone out. So it doesn't mean anything is bad in your life. It doesn't mean you don't like your family. Okay. Mm -hmm. I We just had a birthday party for my, my father and my mother-in-law. They share a birthday. There was a lot of people in my house. I love my family. I have no issues with anyone. There's no drama, but I took like three little timeouts because I, <laughs> I needed them. Okay. Very That's short funny. ones, but this way you don't turn to food. You just have a little headspace. So I encourage you to part of your um, checklist is to find that little corner right? Whether it's your purple room, whether it's your um, um, whatever little couch, little area, the bathroom, pretend you're going to the bathroom, just tune out a little bit so that you don't end up taking it out on food. Okay. Um, so again, I encourage everyone to join the Pesach contest. Even if you don't win the prize, you win just by being on track. Um, and also if you haven't yet read the packet, please go through it. It's huge with tons of resources and information, print it out, have it over Yamtiv. If you want to join my fitness Zoom classes over Pesach, just text me 917-913-1523. Um, and um, we thank you so much for joining um, and taking time out of your busy, busy, busy week and night to be here. Um, it means this is important to you. So I really give you a lot of credit. And we will be sending out the recording tomorrow in case you missed it or want to hear it again. And thank you so much, Jenny, for joining and um and goldie we we just felt your spirit even though we <laughs> from you and um good luck to everybody and i hope everyone has a wonderful yamtiv thank you bye